it was a Friday and my girls were going off to school. So I kept my composure for the moments from the time that they woke up, made breakfast, we get out, go to school, catch the bus. And then I broke down. I was the lowest person. I didn't even feel like a person anymore. This is the lowest point in my life and I've had some bad things happen to me, but I'd rather take a punch in the face than not be able to give my children a roof. And I couldn't at that point. When my girls came home from school that day, I had to lie and smile. I hid my fear to keep my children safe in their own minds. Father God, I just thank you for this group with the heart to serve you and to serve these neighbors. And I just pray that you keep us safe in the heat and with the tools and that we just have a great day working together and building relationships. In your name, amen. amen. The problem I see in this world and, and particularly in, in this country, in the United States, one of the greatest countries in the world, that there are people that don't have a simple, decent place to live. They don't have a stable environment to raise their children. They don't have a safe place that they can go to at the end of the day. And, and some people are, are homeless, they're on the streets. The worst part of being homeless would have been the first part in the emergency shelter where you have to live with 13 other families and you know share a very small space with them and travel you don't sleep in one place you go from one church to another every week we moved all around arizona we've lived everywhere flagstaff phoenix tucson mesa <laughs> tucson so being with People who raise their kids different than I raise mine. I'm, I'm really strict and I'm really worried about them because they're girls. I worry about everything. From that moment that I knew that it actually really in my heart, I knew there was no out. I knew that I was going to find more work. Not a better job, just more work in addition to what I had and we were never going to be homeless again. I had a five year plan. I had a five-year plan that I was gonna get my children their own home. And that home provides hope for these families. It provides hope for parents, for their children to grow and prosper and to become educated and to make a difference in their lives and in their community. Habitat for Humanity's role is to change that one family at a time, to provide a simple, decent, affordable place for them to call home. Our participants, when they come in to apply, they have to have three basic requirements. They have to have the ability to pay, the willingness to partner, which is the sweat equity component of our program. And then the last requirement is the need for our program. They have to demonstrate that they have a need. Back at the time when she was figuring out things, she had three jobs back then that she worked. Two full-time jobs and one part-time job within this two-year span of homelessness because I was determined that they were going to have their castle. We have different programs that we can offer them. We have new construction, um, which um, a family takes about 25 weeks to build, requires 400 minimum sweat equity hours. Then we have the renovation option. Um, and a lot of people like the renovation option because you work less hours, a minimum of 200 hours. Um, the quality of the home is the same, whether it's a new construction or renovation. Then Habitat does offer two additional programs. One is called a reconstruct, or we have a repair program um, that allows us to make those repairs at an affordable cost. I was attending a class. It was an introduction to Habitat for Humanity. So the class was wrapping up and she started to clean up and I, I came up front to, you know, help her, you know, I just wanted to help her put her stuff together. And I said, Wow, this sounds like a great program. It's too bad you can't have filed bankruptcy within the last two years. I just filed bankruptcy three months ago. 
So when I first met Suri, um, there were a lot of things that she mentioned to me that I saw within myself and where I had been and where I wanted to be. And she was very motivated. We talked a little bit about why she had to file bankruptcy. And because again, with our program, we are outside of the box. We're not your traditional yes or no. I encouraged her to apply. I told her to write a letter explaining why she filed bankruptcy. I filled out the application and then I started writing the letter. So when she wrote the letter, I took it to our CEO. He read the letter. I explained to him why she filed bankruptcy. I gave him more information. And after that, he said, you know, we should give her an application. The second step after you fill out the paperwork is an interview. The letter says maybe a 30 to 45 minute interview. Ours lasted almost three hours. What I did is I gave her a call and I, again, having this relationship I built with her, said, hey, I have great news for you. You were approved by the committee last night. And when they get word that they finally have been approved, it, it is such a joyous moment, almost surreal, that they've, that they've actually made it to that point. I think we cried a little bit, you know, because it was an exciting time for her. I think she was able to see that there was gonna be, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel. Although I had received information that we were going to get a home, that we were going to get one, I didn't say anything yet. And I said, no, this is really happening. And I think because what she had been through, I think she thought this could be taken away at any moment. And I think part of not only my job, but as a friend to her that I'd become, I wanted to assure her that this was all her doing. We were just a piece of the pie, but this was all her doing. When I was going to go and get my bank check, just a couple weeks before you get your key, that's the day that I told my girls. The moment I pop up the keys, I'm like, here they are. I went up to her and I congratulated her. I gave her a hug. Um, and I think for me, it was an opportunity to, you know, really to say, here we are now. Um, having personally been there, knowing what she had just accomplished, um, this is why I do what I do. Because I have the privilege of working with hardworking families who deserve better and want better. And she is truly a poster child for Habitat. My life has changed tremendously since I partnered with Habitat for Humanity. I've gone from a overly worried, quiet, scared person to an extremely happy because of the blessings. My mom started to cry the first time we walked in the door. It was and happy tears and everything was like perfect. It was the first time that we had our own house and know that we're not gonna have to move anymore and that we knew that we were gonna be stable. And there was a lot of tears of joy and there was a lot of emotions and it was very amazing just walking in the door for the first time. And I come and I'm opening things and we're bringing something in and it's echoing. So we're running around and we're sliding and we're just touching everything. And we're saying, exclaiming, we're not just saying it, we're exclaiming, this is ours. This is ours. When we got here and we found this safe neighborhood, and it was really nice because in our old neighborhoods, we couldn't go out after the streetlights turned on because it was pretty bad neighborhoods. But here, we could stay out for a long time and play with our neighbors and everything. I breathed that day and I felt relief. Relief that I just, I can't even explain. Habitat for Humanity to me is a family strengthener to give you the foundation that you need for security. And I am thankful and appreciative that there are people out there that care about people who aren't in the best financial situations and can't afford houses that help them to get houses and live in a stable community with a good place to live and for your children to grow up. Thank you, God, for the food we have today and the roof over our head and the family here with me now and for the family that's not here. I'm so grateful for all of you guys and I love you guys. Amen. Good, good baby. Good, 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 good